that because of the um, late development or late adaptation in some cases of typical life choices or habits for millennials, I do think there's still uh, a wide open space in advertising for companies to get to millennials because they're making life decisions later. So, for example, Joe, in the last year, uh, you have had a child. Baby industrial complex. My bro. child will be coming in the next two weeks. But I would I would argue that the baby industrial complex is more wide open than it has ever been, right? Like 15 years ago, you were going to buy Pampers, Huggies, or Lugs. Oh, yeah. Right? There was no mm-hmm. honest company diapers getting shipped to your door from and the Amazon. Toys are subscribe and safe. Like the toy thing we have is Melissa and Doug, and they make wooden toys. Yep. That's all I got is those Melissa and Doug yep. stuff. So, I mean, yeah. great example. Um, you know, my parents' generation had children mostly in like their late 20s, right? Like by the time they were 30, they had already at least started, but mostly completed their family. I'm 33 and just now starting to have children. Um, so there's decisions that my parents made in some cases 10 years before that I'm before I made them. So I'm making decisions now on which bottle to buy, which diaper brand to buy. And I think now because of the internet, there's a whole new range, um, not even necessarily just of product options, but of product research available. Yeah. Right. So like Gerber doesn't have much brand power with me at this point, right? I'm going to research what the best baby food, maybe we'll make our own baby food, right? Like there are a lot of options. I think everybody tries that for like a week. Yeah. (laughs) But do you have any loyalty to Gerber? No, I have no loyalty to any baby industrial complex brand. Right. That's, that's my point here is some of those long staying brands, um, but don't once, have the power. But once you try something and you like and it, it works, you're well, going not to stick even, with it. Not even if you like it. If it works for if the it baby, works, yes. you're going to stick with it. Yep. Whatever works. It, and, and that's the interesting thing there. You're going to try everything that works to help keep your baby calm and mm-hmm. not cry. Yep. <laughs> and then that that's what you're going to stick with. And even that might change. So then you'll have to change too. Right. But also completely open to trying any brand of something that works for the baby, not just it has to be uh, Pampers or Huggies right. or one of like the official baby brands. I mean, I would almost say millennials are more skeptical if it's a big brand now. Now we're like, oh, they probably have unethical practices and... I mean, the honest company's diaper sell point is um, that it's like mostly plant based materials, that they don't add chemicals. So, I mean, I I 100% agree with that. And I feel like for the price you're paying, if it's a big name brand, you probably don't think you're getting the highest quality product. Like, I feel like now I'm like, oh, I want something more organic. I feel like it's just more quality. So, and I think that's an interesting marketing perspective, right? Is previous generations would be like, I want something reliable. Mm-hmm. Like, I want to know when I open the bag, when I open the box, like, what's going to come out of it? Uh, and what has happened with millennials, and this is interesting being that they have overall less wealth than prior generations, is the preferences for quality. Now, I think part of that is because they realize that you can get roughly the same quality for only marginally more money or oftentimes the same price mm-hmm. because you have additional shopping power now. Mm-hmm. It's not just what's on the store shelf, low, medium, high quality. Right. Right.